Welcome to Disaffected. I'm Joshua Slocum, and this is the show where we talk about politics, culture, and relationships through a psychological lens. And this is the episode where we're going to talk about the fact that the LGBPD plus 2IAQS community in Burlington gay bashed the founder of the gay pride parade movement. And no U.S. media will talk about it. We are gonna talk about it and we're gonna show you video that no one else has seen and that no media has. They're gonna parse a conversation with the manipulator because I wanna show you exactly what tricks they use conversationally, how they maneuver uh, when their tricks are being discovered and depending on your goal, how you can respond to them better. And finally, we're gonna end up talking about tone and stance when setting boundaries in heated conversations. I want to jump right into what happened this week, the shame that happened this week in Burlington. We're going to be talking about a man named Fred Sargent. Some of you know who he is, many of you do not. This week on our audio only show, I do um, suggest that you go back uh, to this week and listen to our audio only episode where we have an interview with Fred Sargent because there's going to be a lot more detail in there that you'll be interested in. Fred Sargent was one of the original founders of the Gay Pride, the Gay Liberation Movement, as it was known in those days. You've heard lots of stuff about how trans women gave us our rights and trans women threw the first brick at Stonewall. You've heard a lot of things, and all of these things are actually lies. It's not a matter of opinion. It's not shades of gray. They're straight-up factual lies. This is not true. People who were there and who are still alive, can tell you it isn't true. Fred Sargent was there the night of the Stonewall riots. Okay, He was one of the originals. Not Marsha P. Johnson, who was a drag queen, not a trans woman, who did not show up until everything was already gone. Fred talks about this more in his audio interview. Marsha P. Johnson was not a trans woman who gave us our rights. Fred Sargent is one of the homosexuals who started the movement to give us our rights. He's 74 years old today. The year after the Stonewall riots, he co-founded what was then called the Christopher Street Liberation Day March. Liberation Day, not pride. You hear the difference? It's because we homosexuals were going for actual legal enfranchisement in areas that we did not have the same legal rights. This has become the modern pride parade that goes on around the world. So we're talking about a man who started it all. Let's just go right into the video. I want to show you a little bit just just to set it up, see what uh, Church Street downtown Burlington looks like during this parade. So you got people standing around. This is on Church Street, our downtown thoroughfare. You got parade goers who are marching by. People are standing around in rainbow regalia holding signs. And you see a picture here of uh, Fred Sargent uh, holding up a sign. One side of the sign says, gay, not queer. The side of the sign that you cannot see in this picture um, says, black face and woman face with a red cross through band symbols. So that's what that's what it looked like. And right at the end of that clip, that's going to take us right into um, one of the next ones. You, you'll notice a, a shirtless man here. I suppose, um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. He'd probably happily uh, be called queer. Uh, but um, take a look at uh, his behavior toward Fred. standing there confronting him. He's bare-chested. He's standing in front of Fred. He's trying to block Fred's sign from view uh, by waving his jacket in front of Fred's sign. He's got um, he's got teal blue hair, He short shorts, etc., etc. So, Fred is standing there trying to get his sign out trying to get it seen, and people are beginning to start to cover up his sign, stand in front of him. They don't want to see it. But then something else happens, and we had to look really hard. In fact, Kevin found this. Um, 
Watch this video. There's no sound here. This is just a few seconds, and we've got it highlighted because I want you to see this woman and what she does to Fred Sargent. She's coming over from the right. She's got coffee in her hand. And now she's dumping her coffee over Fred Sargent's head while he stands there trying to get his sign out from in front of the umbrellas that other people are using to block it. Take a look at this woman because you're going to see more of her later. Let's see. Is she peeking out again? Yeah, there's Becky. I don't know if that's her name, but her name's definitely Becky. Okay. So what's happening here is people are beginning to cotton on to the fact that Fred isn't down with their agenda and they don't want other people to see him. Kevin, let's let's roll to the next one. Uh, A3, please. You see people who are putting up their rainbow umbrellas uh, to block him. Fred is moving his sign, trying to get around them so that other people can see it. More people are starting to surround Fred. Uh, and uh, more umbrellas are popping up. Uh, more people are, a uh, guy just walked up with a great big flag hoping to block him. There's now a crowd around Fred. Fred is 74 years old and disabled. He has a cane. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, this one runs over, puts up the umbrella. We've still got teal-haired guy in there. <laughs> this other guy's coming up in another clip, too. So, there we are. The stage is set. And now... Becky makes a return. Let's roll A4, Kevin, please. More and more people have surrounded Fred. They're jostling him back and forth. They're pushing him. That Here goes Becky. Becky uh, is assaulting Fred, as we see on the screen. What are you doing? You realize you're assaulting this man. He started assaulting people first there, yeah, sir. He elbowed fine. my friend. So I'm not you hurting him. Really. Oh, you're not gonna film him There she goes. He he with his cane? Her too. You're not gonna film him hitting me with his cane? But wow, that's fucking crazy. Ah. So I've got a few things I want to pull out from that clip. So you saw this woman knock Fred to the ground after she dumped his coffee all over his head. And he's surrounded by a group of about eight or nine people who are pushing him around. She runs in. You should see the look on her face. If, and, and I know I've said this many times, but if you are listening to this right now on audio, this is one of those episodes where you are losing a lot if you don't also check it out on video so that you can see what's happening. I'll do my best to describe it to you, but really a picture is worth a thousand words for this one. So she grabs his sign. She rips this, one of the sticks holding his sign off and starts to drag him down the street. And someone else runs over and says, what are you doing? Why are you assaulting this man? And she turns and looks at the camera and she says, so what, I'm not hurting him? So what, I'm not hurting him? Hold in your mind too. You've just seen this woman's full face. She is identifiable. She can be known. It would not be hard to find out who she is. OK, I don't know who she is, but I want you to hold that thought in your mind. And I want to uh, I want to I want you to notice something else, too, because this is this is a fantastic example. What we're going through today of many different kinds of behavior, crowd and mob behavior, obviously. But there are a lot of cluster B elements, narcissistic abuse elements going on, as there always are. That's part and parcel of mob psychology, narcissistic abuse tactics, mob psychology, all in the same family, different words for each other. This young man, um, in his ridiculous lady getup, he looks like he might be about 21 years old, long fuchsia hair. Um, his name is obviously Grizel Delina. So Grizel Delina Troon says, you're not gonna film him hitting me with a cane. You're not gonna film him hitting me with a cane. You're not gonna film him hitting me with a cane. You know what that is, right? 
I'm the victim, I'm the victim, I'm the victim. He's hurting me, he's hurting me. Fred wasn't hitting anybody with his cane. I can't believe I have to say this. Does any sane and normal adult believe that a 74-year-old disabled retired man, retired cop, Fred is a retired cop, is actually out there with his cane beating 21-year-old boys? No. This is just reversal. This is what people like this do. They enact harm or they facilitate other people enacting harm or violence. And I mean actual harm. I don't mean heard you heard any word word. And then they say, he's doing it to me, he's doing it to me, he's hitting me. It's just projection and reversal. And the thing about it is, most people standing there probably believed him. Even though with their own eyes they saw that that's not what was happening, I bet you they believed him. People literally don't believe their own eyes anymore. They only believe what they emotionally wish to be true. If they can't see an elderly man who founded Pride being beaten up, they can only see an evil bigot being contained and kept away from the people he's hurting. That's how sick this is. Did you see anybody in that clip move to help Fred? No, you didn't, because no one did. Not one person did. Nobody standing on the sidelines went over to help him at the Pride Parade. And I'm supposed to believe that I'm part of this community. Let's roll the next clip, Kevin, please. A5. Check this guy out here in the green shirt. Fred again is trying to get his sign uh, past these umbrellas blocking him. Then this guy comes over with his flag. Such a weird thing that you would come here, you know? To a pride parade? Yeah. Yeah. Do you not think yeah. that hey homosexuals belong to a pride parade? Hey man, are you on a dead parade? tour? Yeah, but why are you like a homosexual? Him? Why are you filming him? And Fred, this is Fred Sargent. He was at the first Stonewall. Maybe you're unaware of what happened. No, I was unaware. I don't think you are. Okay, check out this girl on the right here. So we got a couple of things going on here. Uh, the, that gentleman, I give him the benefit of the doubt, who came over and started waving his flag in front of Fred. Uh, the guy holding the camera whose voice you're hearing, that's Christopher Aaron Felker, my friend. He's been on the show before. He's the chairman of the uh, 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 Burlington Republican Party. And this guy comes over who looks like uh, He's been on his 26th Grateful Dead tour around the country in the back of a Volkswagen bus. And he says, yeah, such a weird thing that you would come here. I mean, that you would come. It's weird. He says to Chris. And Chris says, what, it's a homosexual? That's weird. You know, dude, I thought the same of you. Heterosexual dude. And yeah, I'm going to make that leap. I don't think you're gay. You might be. You sure might be. But you sure do look and sound like somebody who doesn't have any fucking business lecturing homosexuals. Sir, why don't you, why don't you go drop another hit of acid, okay? And then that young woman, that gothy young woman who's standing to the side of Fred, yipping at him, and she says, You don't need to be here to hate, sir. You know what? Watch your mouth, you little hussy. You're able to stand out there in that get up doing what you're doing because this man paved the way for you. He made this possible for you. And you know what? I don't believe you're part of my community either. I don't believe you're a homosexual or a bisexual. And I don't give a shit whether I can know that or not. This, co this community is full of hangers-on, infiltrators, and cuckoos. All right? Yeah. No.
Did we see in this clip, is this the clip where this another young woman starts grabbing at Fred's stick? Is that in this one, Kevin? Okay. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there's a there's a young woman who who she little elfin thing, and she keeps grabbing her hand in toward Fred. She's grabbing at his sign, grabbing at the stick. She she thinks she's very clever. She thinks she's you know she's doing it, you know on the QT. Little bitch. Mmm. It makes me so angry to watch this, you guys. <laughs> you know what this is? What's going on here? This is a Maoist struggle session. Do you notice the age of all these people who are surrounding Fred and menacing him? They're all young people, with the exception of that old dude who should be ashamed of himself for looking like he did in 1969. This is children screaming at their elders, pushing their elders, assaulting their elders, mocking their elders gleefully. They're going for the olds because it's a great leap forward what they're doing for us, isn't it? This is a sign of very serious trouble. When a society comes to a point where young people are first motivated, motivated to hate older people the way young people do today, and they are motivated. So we've gotten to a point where they're motivated to hate them. That didn't come out of nowhere. Number two, we're at a point where they feel comfortable and they're right to feel comfortable. They're right that they're going to get away with this. They did get away with it. Nothing has happened to any of these people. It's been a week now. This is Maoist stuff. It's communist stuff. It's dangerous. This is a struggle session. They're struggle sessioning the very man who started the pride parade they're at today. And I know that Christopher said to that um, Grateful Dead guy, that's Fred Sargent. You know, I don't think you're aware, but uh, he started the first Pride Parade. Oh, I'm aware. No, you're not. Stop lying. Stop lying. It doesn't really matter if he's aware. Because even if he became aware right in that moment, it wouldn't matter. It doesn't make any emotional difference to this man whatsoever or to any of them. Fine. Better to burn him then, right? Can you get more points for him? We got one of the real olds. Cancel him, erase him, airbrush him, cut him out of the picture, silence him. He won't be quiet. Push him down. Make him sit on the ground where people won't be able to see him. Take his stuff. <sighs> Let's roll the next one, Kevin, please. A6. I think we're going to see another young woman trying to grab Fred's sign here. Got a young man here. Looks like he's about 18 years old, standing on his tiptoes. He's sticking his rainbow umbrella over Fred's head and down in front of his face. It's like he's corralling him, like he's got a net. They are so comfortable doing this. So comfortable. Okay, watch on the right. Watch to Fred's right. Watch it. See her? See her? Ah, you think you're real cute, don't you, you little head toss? Yeah, gonna get your hand in there again, you little bitch? Picky, picky. <laughs> look at her. Look at her. How many, what is that, four times she's put his, her hands on his stuff? Wow. Wow. Guys, that, this what's going on here, this is actual silencing and erasure. The shit that they're always complaining about. You're silencing trans women. You're silencing trans men. You're erasing us. You think we don't, we don't exist. All of that is nonsense, of course. It's narcissistic nonsense. It's borderline personality nonsense. It's manipulation. 
but they're actually doing it. This goes back to uh, the topic that I go on about pretty frequently, which is don't let abusers take concepts and words away from you just because they are trying to pollute those concepts. So things like empathy, people don't want to talk about empathy anymore because the woke have ruined the word. They don't want to talk about trauma anymore because the woke have ruined the word. So we can't talk about trauma. We can't talk about empathy. We can't talk about any of these real things. Don't let them do it to silencing and erasure, too, because that is what they're doing. When they, when people like this empty words of meaning, when they suddenly change longstanding definitions of words, they're not just doing it because they want their own brand name. They do want their own brand name on the language, but that's not really why they're doing it. They're doing it to destabilize the meaning of those words and the meaning of those concepts so that you don't believe in them anymore. And, and I'm not saying that this is a thought, um, a conscious thought process. <laughs> Believe me, most of these people are not this analytical. I realize they're not going around actually interrogating themselves and thinking through their lives. They're just acting sort of on instinct. But there are reasons for these instincts. They're also doing it because if you can destabilize a concept and a term, you've taken it away, people no longer believe in it. Now you can deploy it for yourself. You can take it and you can redeploy it and say, this is trauma. This is, while they're doing the very thing that they claim is being done to them, they are doing to other people. This is, that it, it's the essence of cluster B. It's the essence of narcissistic abuse, the reversal, the stealing of concepts and the redeploying them or the self-victimization. There's many different ways to describe it. And I wanna say a few things about this too. Did you notice the sex of the people harassing Fred? There were some obnoxious men there saying obnoxious things. And I, what is, there used to be a word, I used to know the term for this, but it, it's, it, it, it's a dude thing. It's, it's extraordinarily irritating. You heard it from a uh, Grateful Dead um, um, guy over there. It's just really weird. It's really weird you'd come here. It's just kind of really weird. They do this like, I don't know, man. I just can't figure it out. Ugh, it's it's a very irritating dude behavior. And there's another beard bro uh, doing that with Fred there. I can hear just snippets of his conversation. But you know what? Do you know? Did you notice that all of the people who physically assaulted Fred were women? Women. No men physically assaulted 74-year-old Fred Sargent. Women did, middle-aged women and young women. Tell me more about how it's men who are violent. Only men are violent, right? Women don't do that, do they? They are victims, aren't they? Except when they're not. Except when they exploit their femininity, which is what these bitches are doing. They know that they can get away with trying to hurt a disabled old man because people don't expect women to do that. They also know, because of the women are wonderful effect, that their assault will be seen as less serious than if a man did exactly the same actions with exactly the same amount of force. Mm-hmm. This is what happens. Women like this, they're infiltrators. They are watching. They, they, again, it's not a conscious calculus, but they know subconsciously that they can get away with this. They understand that this is a thing that women can exploit and they're exploiting it. Don't let them do it. We're going to take a break here. And when we come back, uh, we're going to do more pride stuff here, but I want you to get your notebook because we're going to go through a conversation that happened on that same day between Christopher Aaron Felker and another gentleman that illustrates so many typical manipulative conversational and narcissistic, narcissistic tactics. It's gonna be a little bit painful. You're gonna to wanna to throw things at your screen, but that's what you come to the show for anyway, so why not? And before I take us to the break, I want you to remember, please sign up to support us if you wanna chat with everybody because you get to be on our private Discord chat server now. Sign up with Patreon 
patreon.com slash disaffected, subscribestar.com slash disaffected, or send us a one-off donation to us at disaffected.fm by PayPal. See you after the break. Well, we all know it won't last long, but let's have a little fun while we still can. Follow our TikTok account and get neck deep in the insanity with us. You can find us on TikTok as Disaffected P. There's a new perk for disaffected subscribers, and it's a good one. Patreon and Subscribestar donors, as well as PayPal donors, now have instant access to our backstage Discord server. Join multiple topic-based chat rooms and 24-7 open voice chat, and even virtual events on a main stage for hosted conversations and backstage podcast recording sessions. It's not Twitter, and you don't have to pretend Bruce Jenner's vagina is real. Sign up today. The days of Disaffected on Twitter are over, but you can still follow and interact with us on several alternative social media platforms. Find us on Getter at Disaffected Pod. Follow us on Truth Social at Disaffected. You can also find us on Parlor at Disaffected Pod. Welcome back. Did you bring your notebook? Because this is the time for it. We're going to parse a conversation between Christopher Aaron Felker and a man named Evan, who is a fixture of the gay community, I am told. And the reason I'm doing this, we're going to go through this conversation and we're going to stop it at various junctures and I'm going to point out the tactics. Because they're very good examples of manipulative Conversational tactics, narcissistic tactics, reversal tactics, basically dishonesty in many guises. So definitely get your notebook out. Um, Some of this is going to be obvious to you, especially if you have experience in this or if you've been watching the show since the beginning and you've seen some of this stuff before. But I think it's always worthwhile to actually put a, a name on a specific example. So let's listen to the first clip of Christopher and Evan. And it's you're just going to hear his voice for a minute. His face doesn't appear in the video for a few minutes. So um, just take a listen. I appreciate the work for So what's the point? What are you trying to prove? Yeah. Not doing anything. Oh, I know exactly. How you doing, are. Evan? Yeah. Do you know what this is? I, I just don't understand what the purpose is. Like, what are you, what are you hoping to accomplish? You I'm not doing anything. Better? Just standing here making sure that this man doesn't get assaulted. But are you bettering the community that you wanted to represent? That you wanted to run for office and represent? Do you feel you're contributing positively? Yeah, Evan. Okay. I truly do. And if you want to talk about it some other time, send no, me No, you're email. right. You're right here. Video. Yeah, but yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of busy right now. Okay, Thanks. busy doing what? <laughs> While the rest of us are busy doing what? Cheering for people so, and sending positive. What messages. do you think I'm doing? I, 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 it's my understanding that you're with this guy. Who nope. Is, this is Fred Sargent. I met him here. Complicated message. I don't even understand. It's well, maybe news. you should talk to him about it. it. But I witnessed him being assaulted on two different occasions, so I pulled out my camera and started recording. Okay. Right? Okay. Sure. Okay. You have the right to do that. Thank you. Okay. I don't believe that you're doing anything positive. But really? Sure. Well, representation matters. What are you representing? Gay Republicans. Don't you see the pin? Okay. And what is what is gay Republicans stand for? What does gay Republicans stand for? What does it even stand for? What does that mean? He's asking questions that he knows are fake questions and that they sound insane, but he gets away with it because he's he's among the woke. Are you one of our representatives? Why are you even here? Are you one of our representatives? He's trying credentialism. So everyone else doesn't have to be one of our representatives, that is representatives of the LGBTQ community. Um, but Christopher does because Christopher doesn't agree with everything. So he has to be a representative in order to be allowed to be at Pride. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you've contributed positively? What are you even doing? Have you stopped beating your husband and your dog, Evan? I'm just asking questions like you. <laughs> You know, this is a real bitch move, Evan. It's a very feminized bitch move, what you're doing. You've been well gelded. (laughs) I'm very busy. Busy doing what? Busy doing what? (laughs) 
I so wish I'd been there. <laughs> I don't believe you're doing anything positive. You know, you probably did, but notice the insouciant bitch affect that Evan is giving off. He's giving Christopher the, you know, the full scan, the up and down. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It's quite send a me an email. I'm, I'm missing the parade having to cater to your conversation. I don't want to send you an email. I just sure. want you to stop running for office. No. Burlington's never going to elect you. Yeah, we'll it's see. It's never going to happen. We'll see. I, I, Did we you hear that? See, and it that was it. I just want you to stop happen. running for office. Right. So stop bothering people. No. Stop doing negative publicity stunts, which is all this is. I didn't do anything here. This is all Mr. Sargent. And you just happen to be here to videotape it. Well, I live in this town. You just happen to just arrive right there to videotape it. And I've start been standing assault, here. Assault and making a video of it. Yeah. It's just so negative. It's like, so is it? I, I feel it. Tell your friends not to assault others that show up. I don't know who those people are. I'm okay. just telling you. Neither that. do I. And he has a right to stand there with his son. He does. Absolutely. He absolutely does. So. And, and to not be knocked down. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, let's agree I to that. I completely agree on that. Okay. What I don't understand is why you're, you know, like, I'm not hold, you never you're saw kind me, of fomenting this. You the never situation. saw me hold a fucking sign, Evan. You didn't. I'm not here pushing any message. I'm just making sure this man doesn't get hurt. Ah, uh, delightful. So let me take you through a few. I don't know how well you guys can hear that. I've got an earpiece in, and, and the it's not as clear to me as it is when I've got, like, full headphones on. Um, but this is where a narcissistic person starts to tell on himself. What this is really about is Evan is angry that Christopher had the temerity to run for office. He's angry. I just want you to stop running for office. I don't want you to run for office again. Well, that's too bad. You're going to have to accept that that is going to occur because that is what Christopher intends to do. Um, this is what he's really sore about. He hates that Christopher ran. He hates that Christopher's not afraid to run again. He hates that Christopher is not embarrassed or ashamed to show up in public at a pride event. He's, he's upset that somebody like Christopher was allowed to run for office. This is the leftist mindset these days. Yes, people like this. I'm not saying this to be funny. I mean what I'm about to say. If they could, they would have laws that would unconstitutionally bar people like Chris from running for office. Yes, they would. They would do it in a heartbeat. There is the only thing standing between your freedom and these people is the amount of the, the cohort of the population that still actually believes in the U.S. Constitution. And if we lose any more, if any more people peel off, we're going to be in real trouble because that's where this is going. People like Evan would outlaw people like Christopher running for office. And it wouldn't stop there either. The laws would keep going. See, they people like this, manipulative people, people who use narcissistic techniques in conversation, they get flustered when their tricks don't work. And, and Evan's tricks aren't working on Chris. Um, and sometimes they start accidentally telling the truth. They start telling on themselves. And that's what happened here. Um, Evan's real problem was not Christopher's presence there. It's the fact that Christopher is Christopher and dares to be Christopher. He says, stop bothering people. Stop doing negative publicity stunts. Think about that. Stop bothering people. Merely being there is bothering people because it bothers Evan. This, again, the narcissistic mindset. Nobody exists except me. Stop doing negative publicity stunts. Did you catch that? He's starting to suggest that Fred Sargent and Christopher Aaron Felker staged Fred's assault. That's where he's going. He does not care that Fred was assaulted. He knows he was. He knows it. But he doesn't care. Despite what he says. And he says many times, oh, I agree, nobody should be assaulted. He's lying. In my opinion, he's lying. I think he likes it. He knows it and he likes it. That's what I think. And I guarantee you, well, I can't guarantee you, but I would put money on this again, my own speculation. He's been mess messaging his friends, Evan has, I would guess, saying that Fred had it coming and that he's glad it happened and maybe that'll throw the fear of God 
into the rest of us so we don't uh, dare show our faces again. That's what I bet he's doing. He's also introducing a victim narrative. Again, a very typical narcissistic maneuver. Um, first, the first thing to do is deflect. So he's deflecting. He's talk, He's trying to get the conversation away from the fact that an elderly disabled man who founded this movement was assaulted right in front of him. He's deflecting. Doesn't want to talk about that. He, he wants to be the victim, and he wants those who did the assault to be the victim. So he's pushing Fred over to the side, and then he's accusing. He's doing the reversal. He's stop bothering people. Stop doing things to people. He's laying the groundwork for the victim narrative because it was him and the people who assaulted Fred who are the actual victims in this situation. Uh, let's roll the next one, please, Kevin. Yeah, let's agree I to that. I completely agree on that. Okay. What I don't understand is why you're, you know, like, fomenting. I'm not hold, you never you're kind of fomenting this. You never situation. saw me hold a fucking sign, Evan. You didn't. I'm not here pushing any message. I'm just making sure this man doesn't get hurt. That's it. I, you know, that's, that's he, it. He deserves not to be hurt. Sure. Okay. It looks like it's okay. That's it. Okay. That's all I'm here for. I'm not holding any sign, not okay. pushing any fucking agenda, man. I'm just making sure he doesn't well, get hurt. Just, I didn't you even... have a history of saying some pretty problematic things. Well, sure. Yeah. You know, so lots I of gays do. Make, I wanted to make sure that what you were doing wasn't causing more. I'm violence. not doing anything. And I didn't touch anybody. I'm just making sure this man can walk no, no, out no, of I your safety. That's it. I was across the street. I know. I know. So, I saw you here earlier, I and I get it. I didn't know what was happening. I get it. I didn't get any. I didn't touch anybody. I didn't hold a sign. I'm just making sure this man does not get okay. hurt. That is it. That's okay, fine. because yeah. multiple people have approached him and aggressively started yanking I think on him. What they're doing is also within their rights. It is. I'm not. I'm not saying anything's wrong with what they're yeah. fucking doing. But the all right. So you saw him. You heard him start to accuse Christopher of things Christopher wasn't doing. I loved what Chris. You saw me hold no fucking sign, Evan. Rock on, Christopher. See, they just lie with abandon. Evan knows Christopher didn't do anything. He knows it. Most people won't call out a liar like Christopher just did. They'll just be like, no, you saw me hold no fucking sign, Evan. That's how you do it. You can see what Evan is trying to get away with here, and you can begin to piece together the lie-based narrative that Evan is surely telling his friends and anyone who's inquiring about what happened at Pride this weekend. Then he says... You do have a history of saying some pretty problematic things. And I'm doing this. You, you just keep the look on his face. He, he's like grilled cheese girl. Yeah, it's pretty problematic things. Listen, Brenda, because that's what I think of you as Brenda over here, sweetie, Brenda, Brenda Litwin. This is an HR. Honey, you're not in the HR department. You're not the queen here. You don't have power here. Stop. Okay, sweetie? Go home and write yourself up. <laughs> he says, I wanted to make sure that what you're doing isn't causing more problems. Again, the reversal. I'm just here to protect other people, although it's your friend who was assaulted. I'm just here to make sure that what you're doing isn't causing more problems. Do you know what that is? That's called victim blaming. That's another thing that the left would like us to stop saying because they've abused it. Please don't stop saying it when it's actually true. That is victim blaming. Again, it's a very cluster B type behavior. You turn it around. What you're doing is he was asking for it. I mean, you know, Evan didn't say this, but this is what this is what it, he actually means to convey. Maybe shouldn't have had the sign. Maybe shouldn't have been so bold. Maybe should have thought better. <laughs> I pulled out a few things I'd like you to notice particularly. One, Evan phrases what he says as if Fred were not the one who was hurt, but that it was Christopher who instigated something. We don't know what, because obviously Fred wasn't hurt. Number two, think about the effect that this kind of lying has. Think about how many people someone like Evan is telling these lies to and who he's telling them to. 
they're going to believe him. Of course, friends and associates are going to believe him. Just like, you know, you'd believe me if we were friends and associates and I described to you something that was going on. Of course, I'm showing you. I've got video and audio proof here. But right now, among a group of people, there's a narrative that is being concretized right now because of the lies that Evan is undoubtedly telling people. They are very likely believing that two gay men came in and staged a stunt and that nobody actually assaulted Fred. And if they did, he asked for it. This is how people, this is, this is how misinformation works. And finally, pay attention to this. P people who use narcissistic techniques, they use the pose of I'm concerned to look like they're do-gooders. And gay men do this a lot because gay men have a lot of feminine traits and gay men have been, ext I mean, straight men have it bad too, but gay men have been, even more than they were before, they have gone full bore into the societal feminization. They are Brenda's, they are Karen's, they do work in HR. They're almost indistinguishable from the most prissy, uptight, domineering, liberal white woman. That's basically your gay man today. I'm concerned. This, this pose fools almost every naive person who comes along because it uses the look and sound of what genuinely nice and upstanding people would do. But of course, we're not talking about genuinely nice and upstanding people. And finally, he says, I think that what the, he's referring to the people protesting Fred, I think what they're doing is also within their rights. Here's Evan pretending that he forgot that they just pushed Fred to the ground. He didn't forget. He knows. He's pretending. I think he likes that it happened. Want another clip, please? You know, but he's. Yeah, yeah. It's Fred Sargent. He was at the first Stonewall. I, I, all I'm that's saying. That's all is I know. There's no need to have this type of. Vibe subjective, but it's it's his the it's his thing. Route, so that the kids. Well, he was peacefully standing here. Turn, you know. He was peacefully standing here, and then yeah, it escalated he, to this, and it yeah. kept piling but on he further and further in. Forward, right. Well, know, also, it would have been smart if the police cordoned off this street for safety Absolutely. measures, too. That was my concern. Yeah, like, first. right? Why? That's the most dangerous just, spot. You know, all I saw was you recording and, and yelling something uh, about assault, and I... I said, why are you assaulting this man? Because yeah, she was. No one, she was in right. the midst of doing it. I wasn't... I just wanted her to stop. Now. Sure. Okay? Okay. So... Can we all just, you know, have a nice day in Burlington? Like, why we have to... Can we all just have a nice day in Burlington? Well, we could, you idiot, if your damn compatriots would keep their hands to themselves. All I'm saying is there's no need to have this kind of vibe. Vibe. You're harsh in my mail, man. Dude. It totally sucks that your friend, like, got in the way of other people's fists, man. Why'd you have to... I mean, this is a bummer. Evan says, yeah, but he kept pushing himself forward. Fred kept pushing himself forward. Fred's not allowed to push himself forward. He's not allowed to show his sign. Only other people are allowed to push themselves forward. You know what this is? People like this, people like Evan, people like the woke, these people believe in something called sumptuary laws. If you have not heard of that, I'm going to explain it to you. Sumptuary laws were in place. They may have been in other places, but I know for certain they were in place in medieval and early modern England. Sumptuary laws said that certain fabrics, certain colors, certain ornamentations could only be worn by persons of a certain aristocratic rank. So you had to hold that rank in order to be able to wear certain colors. And if you were too low on the scale and you wore them anyway, you got sent to the tower, you got sent to jail. So, for example, only the sovereign, only the monarch and a handful of very close royals in the family were allowed to wear the color purple or ermine fur. Sumptuary laws are created to, to create artificial scarcity. Only the powerful have access to these, these resources so, because they need to have visible symbols of their power over other people. And the woke insistence on everyone else repeating their catechisms, um, signing their pledges, it's it's bound up with this idea of modern sumptuary laws. Evan is Evan is pissed that Fred wore an ermine collar. 
basically, and that Fred is not a member of the royal family, and the royal family is the woke, and Fred is a peasant, and how dare he push himself forward? How dare he do things that are only available to us, the aristocracy? And why do people need to create this kind of artificial scarcity? Because they couldn't have natural scarcity. It's not that, that, that the royals in this setup that I'm giving you, it's not that they have something spectacular that would make them sort of beloved all on their own. They don't have those personal qualities. No, it is only by contrast with the people that they have managed to degrade that they can appear luminous. That is why they do this. Next one, please. Why we have to... a fine day day, my friend. I don't know. It was just really coincidental that you were there to record it. Like you nope. of all people. I just oh, showed it's coincidental. up. Yeah. Met Baron and Mr. Sargent. Had struck like up a well conversation. Like you're well known to share similar types of like anti-trans views. So that's yeah. what was so surprising to me. You know, we can sniff each other Like on out. all the whole street, you just happen to be there in that moment recording. I think it's a stunt that you guys have worked on. I did not plan on yeah, I, I think no it. Yeah, I think Well, I mean, you think the worst in people, my friend, and I, maybe you I should don't, do better. I don't think the worst in people, but to. I can always sniff out a bullshit story. Do you want to look through my call logs? No, I don't. Okay. I don't want to want to touch your phone. Sure. Yeah. So, I'm happy to show it to you. I just think, here's the thing. You're going to run for office again, and the same thing is going to happen. Sure. We're going to say, we don't really want that. Yeah, we don't want that in our talk representation. About it. We're still going to talk about it. It's just, don't, aren't you embarrassed? Not one bit. I would be. Well, maybe you should reflect upon and sort out that internalized shame that you have. I don't have any internalized shame. Well, it seems like it. It seems that you are projecting that. No, I'm not, because I, I have no I believe shame. that if you want to represent the people of Burlington, it should be all the people of Burlington. I do represent all the people in Burlington. Well, some of the viewpoints you shared, I would say that's that would be difficult for you to do. I disagree. Okay. Oh, so much there. It's basically the stop hitting yourself ploy that Evan is pulling on Christopher. And he gives himself away. I think this is a stunt you put on. There it is, folks. There it is. Welcome to the gay community these days. Let's go right into the the next one and final one. Sure. Approach. Yeah, no, no one should be assaulted. Until he started getting approached, I didn't even think about recording okay. anything. Well... I hope you're not planning on running again. Well, we've already discussed this three times during the same conversation. Okay. I will. Okay. All right. And so, do you still hold your anti-trans views? My views aren't anti-trans. Being are... pro-homosexual and pro-woman is not anti-trans. What does that mean? Which words are too complicated for you? Uh, well, if you're going to get like that, well, I'll just yeah. end the conversation. Sure. <laughs> Have a great day. You, you really are not cut out to represent the people of Burlington. Oh. So you really are not cut out for that. Uh, there's nothing to see. You're never going to get elected. Yeah, okay. Literally never going to get elected. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit next We'll cycle. revisit another and, time. And laugh again. Enjoy your day. I hope that you can find something more positive to do with your time, something more constructive. Maybe volunteer in the community a little more. I spend 55 hours a week volunteering in this Excellent. community. Great. Maybe yes. up it to 100. Wow. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you don't have have a lot of time on your hands. Yeah, 55 hours a week volunteering. Like you know. I think you're part of this. Stuff. Well, again, you tend to think the worst of me. There, he just you accused, it, face of he just accused Christopher directly of staging this. You put your viewpoints right out there in the media, and you share them pretty openly. You don't think that trans women have rights, have the same rights to be honored as women and respected, that you don't believe they're women. Well, trans women are actually biological men. Right, so what I'm saying is that the rest of us don't subscribe to that. Really? And Reality? That, and that is why you won't be elected. What? You will not be doesn't elected. doesn't matter, we're still going to have the conversation. It's hilarious that you, you will not be elected. Well, it's I don't just, put my own money into well, it, I put other people's money into it. And they it. throw it down the drain then, because it's never going to happen. Okay. Maybe you should start reflecting upon why it is that you really want to sterilize young gays and lesbian children. No one because wants the to transition... sterilize young and gay and lesbian oh, children. Bullshit. No one's doing that. Bullshit. You're, you're clearly part H659, of the... You're very H659 confused. H659 allowed for the medical transitioning of children without okay, that, parental that's consent. Okay, that's enough. We can stop with that. Thank you. Yeah. 
No one's trying to sterilize gay and lesbian children. Okay. There's so much in there. I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about all of it. That's the worst part. He stands there and denies it. And Christopher comes right back and says House Bill 659 here in Vermont. That's the bill we've talked about on this show that would take away parents' legal rights to say no to puberty blockers for their kid if some doctor wants to inject the kid. That is the first step in the path to sterilization. This is what I want to know from people like Evan. Because this denial is coming right out of the mouth of a man who would have been gelded, physically castrated, nuts cut off, and made into a facsimile of a girl had he been born in this era. That's you, Evan. That's me, too. That's feminine men, feminine gay men. That would have happened to you. How do you sleep at night denying that this is happening to children? Are you so self-centered, so egotistical, so fragile, so dependent on the approval of the popular crowd that you have no space in your heart at all for a little boy who reminded you of you? I don't understand this. I really, really don't. I don't understand it. All right. You know what? There is so much here this week, we're not even going to be able to get to all of it. But I do want to give you a couple of pieces of good news here. First, a uh, quick update on the Canadian boob teacher. You recall from last week um, that a man who is a shop teacher at Oakville Trafalgar High School in Ontario, Canada, has been going to class wearing prosthetic breasts that are so big they hang down below his belly button and they have visibly erect nipples through his tight shirt. And the school has been standing by him saying that this is an inclusive environment and this is his gender expression and blah, blah. Blah, blah. Well, you know what I've said for a year and a half on this show, what is it going to take to wake people the hell up? And it looks like this woke people the hell up. Take a look at this crowd of protesters in front of Oakville Trafalgar High School. <laughs> Hundreds of people standing on the street, holding signs, chanting slogans, all of them protesting this. Pervert. Oh, it warms my heart. If you want more information on the pushback and if you want to help out these Canadian parents, go to nofetishteachers.com. I know that that's a website of some of them organizing. I have not gone through it. I don't know what's on it, um, but you'll probably get more information from them there. I am so glad to see this. Really, really glad to see this. Let's hope it continues. Uh, next up, very quickly from Montana, some good news. This comes from the Post Millennial, a paper you should be reading online because they are not woke. Quote, the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services has adopted a rule preventing people from changing their birth sex on their birth certificates. This new rule, which came into effect on Saturday, means that those who identify as the opposite sex, despite not being born that sex, will not be allowed to change their birth certificates to match their internal feelings about their gender. Ha 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 ha. Imagine that. Accurate public records that you don't get to customize like you were asking for a celebrity autograph. And here is a quote from the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services itself. Birth certificates and other records of birth, including the sex of the child, not the child's gender or gender identity, the, D, uh, the department wrote in its notice of amendment on Friday. Science and medical knowledge recognize the difference between sex, which is a biological concept and a biological fact, and gender, which is a psychological, cultural, and or social construct. Boom. Correct. You get the prize. Watch out, though, because this is a departmental policy, and that means that in the next legislative session, there will be an effort to write a bill to override this policy. So this is a policy. It's not state law. Uh, they are allowed to make these policies. I guarantee you they're going to have to fight next year. There's going to be a bill. It's going to come from a Democrat, and it's going to take that power away from them. It's going to tell them that they have to issue false birth certificates. And I'm going to close up here. I know we've gone a little bit long today, but there was a lot that I wanted to show you. Um, this week, I was with Christopher Aaron Felker and several other 
respectable homosexuals, as he likes to call us, at a um, public meeting with the mayor for coffee, Mayor Moreau Weinberger um, of Burlington. I'm not going to go into the meeting. Uh, check out our audio episode from earlier this week. Christopher and I give the details of this meeting, but we were there to ask the mayor's office exactly what they were going to do and if they were going to issue a statement about the fact that the founder of Pride was gay bashed by the actual community itself. And of course, we had to sit there and pull any semblance of pretend sympathy out of the mayor. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about, I gave him I gave him a piece of my mind, several pieces, actually. Um, I don't know how many I have left. I want to talk about a conversation that I had with a gentleman uh, when we were all getting ready to leave. Very nice man. This is what I'm about to say is critical, but it's not a criticism of this man who I believe came to me in good faith. He was delightful, good conversation. I go out and have lunch with him anytime. But he's wrong. So he comes up to me afterwards as we're talking about this. I believe he was, he was there with his wife. And as we were talking, he said, that he had some advice for me. And he said that he had learned from his wife and daughter that how you say things is as important as what you say. And if you want to be more effective, rephrase your tone and the way you say things so that people around will know that you are coming from a place of love as compared to a place of hate. No, absolutely not. I will not do that, and I'm going to tell you why I won't do it, and why you shouldn't be asking people to do it. You may listen to the advice of your wife and daughter, but I will not be further feminized, okay? Sorry, but I think your wife and daughter are trying to sissy up a little bit, because women don't like direct confrontational talk, as a general rule. There are exceptions. Supply your own, not all's. There is no moral law, no ethical obligation that says you may only speak passionately if you're doing it from a place of love. There is no such moral law. That, ne that was never real. It's not real today, and it wasn't real 10 years ago. It's never been real. Okay? That's not a moral law. There is no moral prescription against acting in one's own self-interest. Let me tell you what I said to him. Um, and it was a very cordial conversation because I am capable of modifying my tone and I'm not going to scream at somebody who's coming at me in good faith. I said, thank you for saying so, but no, I will not do what you asked because I do not want to communicate that I'm coming from a place of love. He looked a little surprised at that. Yeah, I know. I know you're surprised. That's not what I'm trying to communicate. I'm not coming from a place of love. Ah, wait. I'm not coming from a place of hate either. There's a difference. I'm coming from a place of self-interest. I am setting a boundary. I am saying what I will not tolerate. I'm not negotiating. And I'm not coming as a supplicant. I'm not asking for permission. I'm not saying, if I show you that I'm really self-abnegating and I'm only doing this out of a sense of altruism for other people. May, may sir, may I please be allowed to speak? Uh-uh, that's not what I'm doing. And I don't have to do that. I am allowed to advocate for my own self-interest. And it reminds me of something that Jordan Peterson has said. It's, it's a paraphrase. But I sometimes wish to communicate that I'm open that I haven't made a judgment, that you can tell me anything. Depends on the context I'm talking, you know, who I'm talking to and what the context is. But there are other times where that is not appropriate. There are times when you have to set a boundary. And what I did, because I was, um, I didn't scream at him, but I was certainly assertive and aggressive with the mayor. I was baring my teeth, and I meant to bear my teeth. When I do I don't want you to, that's not love. I'm not showing you love. I'm showing you back the fuck off. There is a place for that. Men used to know how to do this. Men didn't used to think that it was a sin because their wife and daughters were uncomfortable with it, okay? That's your stuff, not my stuff. A lot of people use this as a manipulation 
I, this man wasn't. I think this man was genuine. I, I'm serious when I say I have no ill feelings toward him whatsoever. But there are a lot of people who come at this and they do it manipulatively and they do it because they want to present the idea that acting in your own self-interest is somehow selfish to the point of being pathologically narcissistic. And it's usually somebody who wants to be the social top dog. They want you to pipe down. They want to be seen to be corralling you to be respectable. Um, no. No. I'm not coming from a place of love. You know, somebody else said uh, in our Discord, there's another reason you should, we have lots of good conversations about this stuff. She she wrote a good essay. You should check it out. Barbara, uh, Barbara Wegner, um, her substack. I'm sorry, I can't remember, but look up Barbara Wagner's substack. She, got, she wrote a good essay on this, using this incident as a jumping off point, um, and said, you know, a lot of people think that love only has to look a certain way, but sometimes setting a boundary and, and being inflexible about it is an act of love. And she's right about that. But I want to further differentiate and say, I'm not coming to you asking for your permission. I'm not offering you altruism in service of others in order to have permission to speak. I'm saying you've already overspent your credit with me and I'm pushing you back over the line. So keep that in mind. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. There's a new perk for disaffected subscribers and it's a good one. Patreon and Subscribestar donors, as well as PayPal donors, now have instant access to our backstage Discord server. Join multiple topic-based chat rooms and 24-7 open voice chat, and even virtual events on a main stage for hosted conversations and backstage podcast recording sessions. It's not Twitter, and you don't have to pretend Bruce Jenner's vagina is real. Sign up today. The days of Disaffected on Twitter are over, but you can still follow and interact with us on several alternative social media platforms. Find us on Getter at Disaffected Pod. Follow us on Truth Social at Disaffected. You can also find us on Parlor at Disaffected Pod. Well, we all know it won't last long, but let's have a little fun while we still can. Follow our TikTok account and get neck deep in the insanity with us. You can find us on TikTok as Disaffected P.